You're listening to Lore Friendly. I'm your host, Chris Takahashi, and with me, as always, is Alice Bell. Say hello, Alice. Hi, guys. Um, Sorry, this... we're so late. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this week's episode, we're going to use Discord. It's brought to you by Discord. <laughs> Instead of Skype, because Skype has those ads on the side, and I'm tired of looking at them, and Discord yeah, does not these... have ads. Discord doesn't have ads, so we feel like we should promote them a little bit more. Cause <laughs> Although, how, how would Discord actually make its money? I don't know. They're probably looking for some like VC funding or something. I don't know. I mean, like, it's funny that we disparage ads. I mean, I have to put ads on my own blog, so <laughs> it's it's <laughs> ironic that I would criticize them. Or hypocritical, I should say, is probably the better word. Um, and that's kind of just the way the internet is, though. It's something that we asked for, more or less, by demanding yeah. that the internet be free. I mean, had we started with paid subscriptions for all the sites that we like to go to... I like... would have cried. <laughs> YouTube would have no business. Right. I mean, no, I think it would have worked. I just think that there would be no ads, and it'd be kind of glorious in its own way. I mean, because that's how we used to do it. We used to pay for newspapers, like... We would have them delivered to our door. We'd actually pay subscriptions for them. Back in my day, <laughs> we used to get newspapers yeah. delivered to the door and we used to have to pay for our TV <laughs> yeah, can subscriptions. You imagine, can you imagine that? So that's kind of how... I mean, we used to pay for music too. But I mean, now everything is kind of on this... It's either free or... It's not meant to be free, but it's really free. Yeah, they're starting to try and push subscriptions more as funding just because ads are terrible and we all hate ads. And just because the way that ads are presented has kind of reached its logical extreme with pop-ups and flashing lights and all this other shit. Um, it's still not quite as bad as the dark days of the internet about yeah. five years ago when you yeah. used to get those really annoying emoticon things going, hello, woo <laughs> It's... I mean, Tumblr started doing that. Like, I've oh. had to download that XKit thing just to stop Tumblr from blaring out at me every time I refresh the page. Yeah, with if hidden you do a advertisements. Search on Tumblr, now there's ads on the top, and it's just it's what we asked for more or less. I mean, it's by not by refusing to pay for anything, we've kind of created this monster. So we're kind of partly to blame for that. And so, speaking of which, that's why we have Patreons now. <laughs> Because hopefully yeah. <laughs> we don't... We're all sellouts. Yeah, so hopefully we can find alternative funding so there doesn't have to be ads on, like, websites or ads on our podcast, like, sponsored by so-and-so. Yeah. So, so that's why I think... <laughs> that's why I think I'm going to just start, like, pushing the Patreon links everywhere. I don't get, this, this whole podcast is going to be a subliminal message to fund our Patreons. We're going to have Patreon Give us links. money. Yeah. Give us Patreon money. Patreon links under our names, Patreon links... Um, on Twitter and, and just everywhere. It's like, I don't care anymore. At this point, like, it's the way the world is. And if you're going to make Please content, donate. you need to have some source of funding to continue to do so. And so... We don't do this out of the kindness of our hearts. <laughs> I need to fund my spiraling alcoholism. <laughs> no. But we are grateful for any um, donations that people give because, I mean, that's not something that people do easily or yeah often so yeah i'm very grateful for the one dollar a month <laughs> i'm getting from you that will buy me a bottle of wine by the end of the year no it's important that to celebrate at... <laughs> no, i mean it's important $1 that a year. the actors who've contributed the most like not only do i pass like whatever saving or whatever patreon donations come my way to you guys just also to let people know if anyone comes to my Patreon page that, you know, you can also donate to the actors. Like, yeah. a lot of people don't realize that. Though, mod authors don't get many donations. I, I'd say, like, maybe less than 1% of people who use mod donate. Yeah. But um, the ones that we do get, it's always like, okay, what do I do with the percentage that goes to the actors? Because even though you would be getting, like, half a penny, literally, um, <laughs> because there's, like, 300 <laughs> actors... That I've worked with, so like if I get someone sends me like five dollars, like that would be like a tenth of a cent, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you do the math, but it's not about the money; it's about the principle. Like I can't keep that all to myself. Just on. Yeah, principle. I want my tenth of a cent. <laughs> yeah, damn yeah. it! So I found the best way to do that is 
either by encouraging donations to actors or what I've been doing, which is like buying mics and buying sound equipment. Um, the problem is I've probably went a little bit overboard on that. Like I've probably spent like <laughs> four or five thousand dollars of my own money. But, oh shit! <laughs> but that it's that's good. don't worry. That's it's completely selfish because I wanted the mods to be better. So if that's I find such like an a lot actor, of money. yeah, yeah, it oh is. Oh my god! A lot of like I don't pay attention to the amount I spend. Like I told you, remember. <laughs> In the previous podcast, I talked about how I overdrafted my bank account without even noticing for like two months. Yeah, so I don't really pay attention to money. And so the other day, when I was making a Patreon post, I was counting up the amount of mics I bought, right? And Mm. it came out to like four or five grand. And it's not just mics, it's like foam, it's like, um, you know, mic stands, all kinds of just equipment and stuff. And it's like, whoa, I spent a lot of money. (laughs) Suddenly, I don't feel bad about begging anymore (laughs) for funding. (laughs) Suddenly, it's not a big deal to me because I'm I'm never going to get that money back. I don't think with, like, I'm thankful to the four patrons I have, but I don't think I'm ever going to have enough patrons to pay. Justify that. (laughs) Yeah, just to to get the money back that I spent. So, um, yeah, until then... (laughs) Uh, that's why I'm going to just like spam the links everywhere until I feel like, I don't know, that we've recouped some of the money <laughs> that we've invested into this mod. I, I don't know. For just $4,000 a month, yeah. you too can help buy a ridiculous <laughs> amount of microphones for actors over the internet. I do think that it's benefited <laughs> the mod community as a whole because I've seen... Oh, trailers yeah. for videos with other actors that I bought mics for and they're like mm. I'm like oh that person got the role because they're talented and they're great but maybe just a small 1% of that is is a contribution from me <laughs> well there are a lot so. of mods that like when they're looking for voice acting especially the higher quality mods they're looking for the whole package they're looking for talent and like being able to do yeah. different voices, but yeah, also having this. decent sound quality recording. Yes, they should be thankful to me. I did that. <laughs> you are the overlord of the <laughs> yeah. voice acting yes. community. It wasn't. It wasn't the voice actor with their incredible talent and skill. It was. It was all me. Thank <laughs> me. <laughs> no, but really, over the last couple of years, the quality of modding. And like, especially quest mods and things like that, the ones that really require the voice acting, it's just skyrocketed. Like, you look at the earliest mods, yeah, for Skyrim in comparison to the ones that have come out later, and it's just worlds apart. It's really incredible, like how. Yeah, I think the just the knowledge in general of how to get a good recording is spread pretty vast. I know I usually whenever I get a like a bad recording recorded audition, I usually give them tips anyway, just in case in the future they you know improve their situation so yeah it's just i think the knowledge of what constitutes a good mic what constitutes a good recording uh it's just gotten better over time so well to be honest i still have no idea what constitutes <laughs> a good recording and i've been doing this for what three years now well you have a good recording so <laughs> it's, it's um i just hope for the best and then i just throw the sound editing on to you well that's the thing you only know <laughs> when something's wrong i mean you only get mm. told you only get given feedback when something's wrong and something needs to be fixed so think about like it when that i scream way. into the mic <laughs> yeah yeah well that's just the, um the yeti does have like a low threshold for um screaming so you kind of <laughs> That's so a no pa- death whales for so a while. So that's a Patreon goal, to get a mic that you can scream into. Because then we can do more varied death cries. Yes, exactly. Hey, motherfucker! <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> perfect. We can extract that and put that in the yes, mod, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's going to be <laughs> our first death. Um, De- <laughs> cry. Default I mean, death cry. Yeah. I mean, we could do something like that because the companions in the game are essentially, well, they're essentially essential. Um, so that's a horrible adjective to use, but they're basically essential, so they can't die. And we could say whatever we want on our yeah. death throws. <laughs> yeah, we can just have that, like, that, and then people will only be able to find it if they've got, like, a kill all NPCs oh, model or something. That, yeah. <laughs> so it'd be like little Easter eggs. Yeah. 
like, so ah, fuck you. you <laughs> Make me essential again. <laughs> Why are you doing this? I hate you so much. <laughs> I had so much left to live for. Mm. <laughs> Jerk ass player. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know you had reservations about making that Patreon, so I'm glad you did. Just because it's important. I just I just had a great idea for a video to go alongside yeah, it. Yeah. I got my little sister to help me write it. And hopefully it's... more actors will do the same. So any actors Intent. Listen- yeah, any actors <laughs> listening, um I will send you a dollar. And Hey ten- listeners. Yeah. Donate. A whole dollar. Of course. <laughs> donate. I can't do it for all 300 or so actors because my Patreon cannot afford it. You'd be into the minus again. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder, I should request that Patreon offer tenth of a cent donations <laughs> in order to more equally distribute the amount. My um, wealth. <laughs> yeah, that the actors deserve. <laughs> yeah. So what are, you, what are you on Patreon-wise at the minute, like... So, oh, so right now I am at, let's see, $32. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a lot of money. Yeah, but that number's a bit inflated because I got one very generous donor by the name of Telthar who donated $25, but I think he only did so because that was incorrectly set as the minimum. And yeah. Yeah. So if you're listening, Telthar, and I've told you this via message up, Please feel free to lower that amount. I might sneakily set it to 1,000. <laughs> I sneakily set it to 25 because I thought <laughs> no one would pay for this. I'm like, no one's going to pay $25 that way. Lazy me being lazy me. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, but the point is is that they're going to lower that amount at some point. There's yeah. no way they're going to continue. So $32, 35 and then Patreon takes 3 is like yeah. is more like I would say fifteen dollars or twenty dollars, yeah. That's still a lot of money. It is for what we do, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe not for what you do, but because you put in insane, an insane amount of time into this mod. Yeah. So. The, I think like, that's that, below minimum wage. Right. It's it's sure. way below minimum wage. Um. <laughs> I think another issue, which is why our patrons are going to be hard to fund or hard for, to justify funding for people, is the fact that there's no real incentive because we already have, yeah. uh, we've already given you the content, right? Yeah, it's not like you're going to withhold updates and things like that until I want to get $30 yeah, yeah. a month, yeah. otherwise I'm not going to update. Yeah, there there have been mod authors who have made like like their Patreons or, or their Indiegogos or Kickstarters or whatever are extremely well-funded, but it's because mm. they don't have the time to do it unless they get the money to fund it. So it's kind of like a paywall in a sense where it's like, yeah, and I need money to you know have the time to make these quests. Otherwise, you're not going to get anything. Yeah, and, I need to be able to justify this. Right. And so they get funded because people want the content. Mm. And I have no problem with that because everyone's situation is different you know we yeah. were able to deliver the content prior and that's just our choice that's just something we wanted to do because we we're going to do it anyway right yeah it doesn't matter if we're funded or not um but other people's situations are different other people may need money they may need because they you know they don't have the time to do it yeah if they want to dedicate enough time to the mod to be able to release it at a certain date and things like that right. then they need that funding so that they can right. not have to go to their job or eat Right, and while it is a little bit, like, I don't want to say sketchy territory, it's just a little bit awkward because of yeah. the fact that Bethesda owns half the, you know, rights to whatever you make, I guess. I mean, they don't own yeah. the rights, but they kind of are... It's they, not like something you made on your own, basically. No. But... You've used the tools that they've provided to create. Right, and they're not getting any of that. Um, so that's where it does kind of get, like, a tad unscrupulous, but... In general, as a concept, if Bethesda was okay with it, I'm okay with it too for these people who are getting their outside funding. If they need money in order to create their mods, I mean, I'm fine with it. That's yeah. Everyone's situation is different and you know, you never want to like count other people's money or, or hate on people because no. they're trying to get funding to do something they love or doing their hobby. Um, the only thing is, is that for us... It's unlikely that anyone is going to want to fund us because we created the content 
first. Yeah. And we were going to create the content anyway. This is just sort to help us with the costs of doing so. It's not like I'm going to stop right, right, recording right, right. lines and things. Yeah. Or, and you're not going to stop adding in new quests and adapting no. to stuff like fixing bugs and things like that you're not yeah. going to stop just because oh but just like the fundamental human Patreon. incentive is why I, I really don't think anyone is going to donate much it's just the fundamental yeah. human incentive of paying for something that you've already got yeah you've like given the you've like given the product right before, and then say hey if you want to donate if you want to help us with the costs of what we just made that'd be great it's a little bit harder than to say like oh i have this amazing great thing that i might be able to make and i need funding to do it and then it's completely different so yeah but yeah woe is us no one's gonna feel sorry for us i mean these these are choices we made so yeah. donate <laughs> <laughs> okay so that long advertisement is over let's actually talk about like stuff that wasn't that we a very advertisey advertisement it was more a long-winded meandering... Yeah, look. but that's essentially the crux of why we will never really get funding. Because we're not yeah. the type of people who... Because I know mod authors, and I don't want to keep harping on this, I know mod authors who are, who have not gone into modding Fallout 4, who have not done anything for Fallout 4 because they're waiting for like the paid mod thing. And so what yeah. they want... Oh. So, like, for us, if the paid mod thing came out, it's like, well, we've already given you all the content for yeah. free. Um, now pay so, for it. <laughs> so it's, it's not going to... I don't know if it will really work. But the, the, the people who are more business savvy, they're kind of, like, waiting for it. You know, they're like... Yeah. They're like, okay, I've got this great idea, and I might implement it. But I'm going to make sure that, you know, I might be able to get paid for it first. Yeah. <laughs> so those people are smart. We're dumb. <laughs> But we knew that already. Yeah. We oh. are like the epitome of dumb. It's okay. <laughs> we can just pretend to be those cool kids who are like, yeah, we did sell out. We're, we're fine the system, man. Yeah, we're, we're going to keep modding free forever. We're not sellouts, even though we have a Patreon and asking for money. But... <laughs> Make modding great again. Yeah. <laughs> we're not sellouts like those <laughs> other guys. Um, anyways, enough about that shit. Enough about begging for money. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about some of the stuff that has gone on since our last po- bleh, last podcast. Uh, well, there's been a lot of stuff. <laughs> what stuff do you want to talk about first? DC. DC gone mad. Mm, DC. They've come out with like movies and all kinds yeah, of shit. they've had two major releases, both of which I was really excited about, <laughs> and both of which filled me with various levels of disappointment. Well, I haven't watched Suicide Squad, but I heard it was very uneven. Like, they didn't really know what direction they wanted to go. Yeah. Margot Robbie was stunning. Mm. She played the perfect Harley Quinn. Like, her mannerisms... The accent wasn't quite there. But, you know, you got to give your own spin to a character. But, like, Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn was absolutely perfect. Jared Leto's Joker, even though he was in the film for maybe five minutes... Mm-hmm. His interactions with Harley were very, like, 90s animated series. Oh, that's good. But, like, they toned down the more abusive aspects. Like, there was a lot of deleted scenes that Jared Leto was really upset about mm. that toned down the more abusive aspects of the relationship, which is just as essential as the loving, obsessive side of the relationship. Right. In terms of the plot, it didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> So there's no spoilers here. It's basically generic action movie. Mm. Which is a real shame because they had such an amazing cast of characters and actors. And it's like they just didn't know what to do with it. Yeah. I didn't watch it, so I don't have an opinion. But um, I did watch The Killing Joke, which is the other film. that. God, I've been saying for like months when it was first announced how excited i was i think i mentioned it on one of the podcasts yeah that i was just so excited for it because it is like mark mark hamill said that that was the fit that was the um the one thing that he really wanted to do as the joke was voice the killing joke Mm. they got back all the animated series cast he does give a great performance but that's kind of mark hamill is is just amazing 
in general. His yeah. Joker is the best Joker. Sorry, Heath Ledger. But <laughs> he, his Joker is like my favorite version of the Joker. His voice, his laugh, everything is yeah. just so perfect. Well, and the, he's the animated with the series character. Joker for me is definitely the canon Joker. Yeah. He's just incredible as the Joker. But the thing is, like, the Killing Joke is such a an incredibly revered Batman story, but it's also incredibly controversial because of what happens to Barbara Gordon, no. like twenty years old spoilers. <laughs> but like she this is this is how um Barbara Gordon becomes the Oracle. And like a lot of the controversy was about how like it took away Barbara's agency and it and um the sexualized manner in which she was um in which she was tortured and how her pain was used as man pain for Commissioner Gordon and things like that. I'm using like modern terms. Mm. But I don't think they called it man pain in the eighties. <laughs> man pain. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> it's like mansplaining. <laughs> it's yeah, like but my it's like word. <laughs> But it's like they thought that Hey, you know what the best way to rectify this is? We're going to give Barbara Gordon a stereotypical, really creepy love story with Batman. And we're going to give her a 90s gay best friend. <laughs> and we're going to make her regret fuck Batman. And then we're going to have her pine over it. And then we're going to have Batman mansplain to Barbara Gordon why she can't do that. <laughs> and that took up 40 minutes of the film. <laughs> yeah. 40 minutes. If you want to talk about uneven films, I mean, the That's... fact that they kind of just <laughs> put that... You can split it in half. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my feeling about it is, I mean, I never liked The Killing Joke to begin with. Um, my feeling about The Killing Joke is that it's like if you took Jon Snow, had him sack or take back Winterfell... And then at the end, instead of doing what they did to Ramsay, Jon Snow and Ramsay stand on the top of the castle and yuck it up for a few minutes. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. They tell jokes and Jon Snow says, <laughs> I can rehabilitate you, Ramsay. I mean, and then Barbara Gordon obviously is the Sansa character in this. I mean, to me, it only works if... They're even ginger. They're both ginger. Yeah, I mean, to me it only works, the killing joke only works if you dismiss Barbara Gordon as a character completely. Like, yeah. if you treat her the same way you treat all the other people Joker kills, like, nobody cares about the guy at the amusement park, right? It's just, yeah. he's just there to die to sort of explain how homicidal joke the Joker is or how, you know, yeah. how fucked up he is. The killing joke only works if you completely dismiss Barbara Gordon as a female character. So why the animated series kind of made things worse for me is they kind of ingrained the fact that Barbara Gordon is a person that exists that Batman cares about. I mean... The yeah. fact they also have sex and stuff like that, it makes it the fact that he dismisses what happened to her and has this like laugh with the Joker at the end. Yeah. It makes it seem even more weird because this is the person who he just you know, he he just hurt and raped or potentially raped depending on Yeah on the interpretation. Yeah, the but interpretation it's very it's far more heavily hinted in the in the film than it is in the comics which is yeah and it's just ra a rarity <laughs> and so his reaction is kind of just gross because as a viewer you're kind of angry and you're you, you don't like this guy at all like the joker feels less human and then th the whole point of the killing joke is to try and humanize the joker and make batman and joker seem like mirror reflections of each other yeah but after you watch what happens to barbara gordon if you care about her at all as a character you don't care that the Joker had a tough, you know, childhood or he was a, like a, you know, had problems with his like family yeah. and money situation. Who cares about that shit? You, did you see what he just did to Barbara Gordon? Yeah. I mean, like at that point, you lose all sympathy for everything that happens after. You don't really see him as a person the same way you would had you not cared about Barbara Gordon at all. Yeah. And so I find like the whole thing like just kind of disconnected in terms of. Um, the time period it was released in where everything is trying to be more realistic and more gritty and gritty. more dark. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Sin City kind of thing. And you're trying to play into these aspects of serial killers that they do all these horrible and evil things. But then at the same time, you're also trying to humanize and make the Joker more realistic as a person. And those two things don't really jive. 
And yeah. there's also the whole cartoon aspect of it where the Joker escapes from prison again. There's no such thing as a life. <laughs> yeah, there's no such thing as a life sentence in Gotham City. So oh, that darn Joker! He can go and buy yeah. theme parks even though he's an escaped yeah. convict. Yeah, exactly. So there's no consequences for. So not only are you saying the Joker is doing these horrible, horrible things, you're also putting into play the fact that there's no consequences for it because a yeah. Batman can't kill, and b the Joker's just gonna escape again. So you're trying to create this real life environment in a DC world and it just doesn't play and the perfect example to that is Game of Thrones where it's a real life environment and you get real life consequences Ramsey gets the fuck gets the his... fuck beaten out <laughs> yeah, of him by... and he gets eaten alive by his dogs he gets the fuck eaten out of him yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this is the biggest contrast between maybe the comic and the film like the comic ends with ambiguity like it pans away from the joker and batman and suddenly batman's the only one laughing so you're thinking and he places his hands on joker's shoulders but because it's silhouetted looks like he's placing his hand around his neck so there's that kind right of con like there's that ambigu- ambiguity like has this finally broken the batman kind of thing where whereas in the film it doesn't have that same ambiguity right um I think if you read it that way, because there, there's a lot of people who say that, okay, the Batman killed the Joker in that scene, right? But Yeah, but there's there's the ambiguity there. You're not quite certain. Like, right. You probably didn't, but there's yeah. the ambiguity. I think that ambiguity helps the comic, but what hurts the comic and the film is the authorial intent here. And I don't. it depends on how you feel about authorial intent, but it's clear based on the script notes that Batman had no intention of killing the Joker. Yeah. That the whole point of that whole last part was that Batman had that one bad day that Joker was talking about, and yet he didn't sink to his level. Yeah. That Batman, despite having being this mirror opposite and being so similar, did not go the route that Joker says all people will go if they have the one bad day. Yeah. So it's like, even though you did these horrible things, I am the Batman and I follow the law. And I am better than you. I am better than you because <laughs> I do not sink to your level. And that was kind yeah. of like... And the whole laughing part was just kind of like them sharing a moment together, which is, again, it is just fucking weird if you're going into this whole realistic realm, this realm of realism. Whereas I think yeah. it would have complete, it would have totally worked if they were doing it 90s Batman animation style, where the consequences weren't as sadistic like there's no because they couldn't have the kind of sadistic consequences like if they'd adapted it animated series style maybe it wasn't like the the well they could have still included the shot but it wouldn't have been as brutal and as graphically depicted like it was really gratuitous right we got a lot of barbara boob yeah first we got the the sex scene and then we got the semi rape yeah. scene thing and it just felt very gratuitous whereas they wouldn't have been able to do that in the animated series like i get that it's a darker story but they've managed to address dark themes in the animated series without it feeling gratuitous or just there for shock value yeah exactly and that's kind of why i think the killing joke would have worked had they tried to soften Tone it down yeah, maybe and you know pretend like they were censors there instead of kind of taking it up to 11 the way a lot of those like early 90s late 80s comics did like Sin yeah. City it's like well, sex or sex blood sex blood and it's just, when you do that it's fine yeah. it's just is this the right medium for that like Game of Thrones is the perfect medium for that but is the DC Comics world with their you know revolving door prison system and their characters endless can't retcons die. yeah yeah See, the the thing that I liked so much about the animated series was what managed to come out of the censorship because it was a kid's show. The Joker wasn't allowed to outright kill people as, mm. as his comic counterpart did it in that era. Right. Whereas, um, so that's how the laughing gas got introduced. And that was more terrifying, I think, than the straight out killing of people. Like yeah. the, the laughing gas that like paralyzed people and froze their faces into this chilling grin. And that's become such an iconic part of his character in more modern times. Yeah. Like the use of laughing gas and things. That... And it's such a creepy thing, but it's still child friendly because it's not grisly and gory. It's a bit more abstract. Yeah, that's a great point. It really allows him to 
be more three-dimensional because it still captures the essence of who the Joker is, which is both funny, scary, and extremely dangerous. Yeah. While at the same time, he isn't completely irredeemable like he is in The Killing Joke. Yeah. Basically, DC's not had a good summer. No. <laughs> They've not had a good year, basically. <laughs> like, what have they had? They've had... um. They have Batman v Superman, which I haven't seen. It's not as bad wasn't. as people make it out to be. It's just popcorn for the mind, more or less. And yeah. And then they've had Suicide Squad, which was like the most hyped film of this year, probably. Like, even more hyped than Civil War. Mm. But had no story. Yeah. And then you've got The Killing Joke, and the animated universe is the strongest aspect of the DC film empire whatever you want to call it (laughs) and even the killing joke wasn't great it just plodded on for 40 minutes about this angsty stereotypical love story and then when it actually got into the meat of the comic it was good because there were amazing act there was amazing acting and stuff in it but mm. yeah I was really excited for it, and I've been disappointed on both Yeah, fronts. I think what, <laughs> what ultimately <laughs> happened was they were trying to give Barbara Gordon, or give Batgirl, like, her platform as a character and try to, you know, elevate her without really understanding, like, what made the killing joke Who Barbara good. Gordon <laughs> is. <laughs> or yeah. what made... I mean, that part, yeah, that's a whole other criticism that just it, how they did it was poorly done as well but um the mere fact that they're attempting to kind of put her in the spotlight kind of goes against what made the killing joke great which is well i don't want to say great because i hated it but great in quotes (laughs) or what made people iconic yeah iconic yeah is the fact that it's completely centered around joker and batman's like mirror relationship and the only way that works is if you kind of dismiss the joker's victims entirely yeah, because otherwise it makes Batman and his morals completely unsympathetic. Yeah, yeah. and imagine, it doesn't even have to be Barbara Gordon. If they had just done the whole first half about the amusement park guy, his life, his family, and like his yeah. kids and shit like that. And then... I think, honestly, that would have been more hard-hitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because we wouldn't have got this stupid bloody story <laughs> yeah. about Barbara Gordon and a sassy gay friend and have having yoga with the Batman. Yeah. It was just weird Jesus. on all levels. It was just a bunch of weird <laughs> shit. Like, the whole Joker, like, is it like a sex god kind of thing? Like, that was just weird, too. <laughs> like, they had Batman interviewing, like, prostitutes under the bridge, and they're like, oh, yeah, Mr. Jake. Yeah, yeah, he hasn't visited yeah. today. You know, he always visits us after he escapes, you know. And yeah. Has lots of sex. <laughs> You'd think the police would know the first place to look yeah. at. <laughs> and then his wife is like, you're great in the sack. Like, yeah, okay. Okay, we get it. The Joker is a sexual god. <laughs> He's got a dick the size of his grin. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just it was just weird, but it's just weird in the way that like late eighties, nineties comics are. It's just yeah, it's this kind of like an era that doesn't really fit in today's landscape, I should say. I Me mean, could say that, but I mean New Fifty Two's pretty overtly gr- gritty. Like oh, stupid gritty. Like if yeah yeah. I don't read comics anymore. Um, so. I'm too. I old do. For I tried reading the Harley Quinn comics and like they've t- basically turned her into Deadpool. Oh god. That's that's not my Harley, damn it. <laughs> my Harley has blonde pigtails. She's breaking the fourth wall. Yeah. Oh. God. Like her fir- her whole introductory comic was her choosing her comic book artist. Uh... Like I mean, you got some really great art in it. In fairness, but. though, to the writers, <laughs> in fairness, it's really hard after, like, you know, 50 or 40 years. I don't know how long she's been around, but no, actually 20 she's years. She's been around for, 20, like, 20. 20, okay, 20. <laughs> well, how many comics have been made in that time? It's just at some point you kind of want to tread new ground and break new ground. That's why you get this kind of soap opera kind of effect with comics where you just do random crazy shit and then just retcon it later. Um, but... With comics, you're always trying to just do something new. So I don't blame them for trying something new, but when you do that, a lot of times it's not going to work. So Yeah. I'm an old school Harley fan, goddammit. (laughs) You like your coffee black. (laughs) 
no weird shit in it. <laughs> You're a straightforward woman. Yeah. I like my Harley Quinn's crazy, uh, devoted <laughs> to the Joker, and is a decent analog for abusive relationships that, that isn't a TM strong female character. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways, I think we've ranted enough about that. Yeah. Um, DC. Boo, DC. Boo. Um, let's talk about video games. No Man's Sky. Oh. More like No Man's Lie, am I right? Uh, I'm like the 3,000th person to I make that joke. Wait, I thought you liked joke. the game. I thought you liked the game from what I heard. When you first talked to me, you were like, oh, I love this two game. two hours. I liked it for the first two oh, hours. Oh, so I just happened was... to have caught you in that two-hour window. Yeah. Like, had I and asked you, like, three hours you later... You realized how dead the whole universe was. Mm. Like, they've got 18 trillion planets with nothing on them. <laughs> the animals were pretty cool at first, but then you keep on seeing the <laughs> same legs on some of them, or the same faces, or the same eyes... And it's just like, well, okay, I can understand maybe animals in the same star system having similar features, but I swear I you I saw those um those legs a couple of galaxies back. Hmm. Do you think that there's any sort of intelligence or advancement made in the algorithm that that does the procedural generation? I mean, there's procedural generation that is r completely random, and then there's procedure generation that has some intelligence as far as rules and what should go where so do you think it's more on the random side or is it more on the intelligent side where you're like at times impressed by the rules i was impressed by the by the technical aspects of the game the amount of assets they created and like the animals did look seamless it's just that there's the same legs on every animal and <laughs> things like that so like whilst the whilst the way that it was put together in a in a creature was mostly seamless okay so that's and the way thing. that the terrain was put together was most it's a technical achievement it's a shit game <laughs> it's a wonderful sandbox with no sand in it i think is the best way to describe it see i'm more interested in those advancements from a technical perspective because Obviously, what we eventually want is a sort of virtual reality experience that is automatically procedurally generated. Um, yeah. But we're obviously not there yet, right? So yeah. I'm more interested... I was interested in the game as a technical concept, as a technical... As a technical feat, the random generation is really impressive. It's just that there's... You can't market it as a game. Mm. It's not something you want to play. Because it's not a game. Yeah. <laughs> no. Like... The gameplay elements are harvesting minerals, which you do by firing a gun at them, attacking robots, which are all the same on every planet, um, trading with AIs, and doing like, oh, what do you call them? The the um, adventure quest books. Choose your own adventure books. Yeah, those ones. It's basically a mix of. Pretty crappy choose your own adventure, and I like my choose choose your own adventure books. Um, <laughs> You're the target audience, and they still fail to please you. Yeah, and then there was ov obviously like all the lies about what the game would be able to do. There was that thing where you could, yeah, it's multiplayer, but you might not encounter anyone while two people found themselves on the same planet in the same place and you couldn't find each other. He's like, oh, I can tell <laughs> say it's multiplayer, and they'll never know. But no, I've made so and then many of course planets. two Twitch streamers got together <laughs> to try and find each other, and they didn't. Yeah, and that's the problem with hype in general, is just making promises that you just yeah. can't meet. I mean... Hype culture is toxic. Yeah. And that's just a problem for the industry in general. Yeah. It was such a highly anticipated game, and it was so well marketed, and it won so many awards before it came out, and when it actually dropped, yeah, it's a technical piece but i would have rather they released it as this kind of software for people to build their own games out yeah, of yeah yeah but see that's not where the money is well it could have been they could have made like made a profit off of like every game like sold it as well, technical software and then like make profits off of people who buy the games that have been made with that i think they would have sold a lot less though 
that's a given. Of course, you know, if you have scruples, oh, yeah. <laughs> your reputation will survive easier if you had marketed the game that way.、Um, but let's say they did market the game that way, that this is something that, you know, we're going to build throughout the future, that, you know, mods can fix this. <laughs> no, but is, it, is that something that can be done with this game? Is it something that we can mod or build upon? Um, I、future? feel like you could mod some gameplay into it. Is it a mod friendly game? <laughs> no.、Oh. But I feel like if, if they allowed modding, you could actually mod some gameplay into it. Yeah, because that's what I, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought、Savage. it would be. When looking at, like, anytime you say the words procedurally generated, I mean, Daggerfall was procedurally generated, I mean, but it was, obviously doesn't compare to like, a handcrafted world like Morrowind, right?、Um, yeah. But the goal is to have both. It's to have computers that are smart enough to make creative stuff like Morrowind, but do it on a scale and do it quickly and cheaply.、Uh, yeah. On a scale like Daggerfall. Or,、um, Daggerfall? Is it Daggerfall? God, I'm messing this up, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to fix、Daggerfall. it so I know my TES stuff. <laughs> I'm going to edit that later. You know, one of the most popular Elder Scrolls modders doesn't know the names、yeah. of the different readers.、Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> Like my favorite game, Sky Roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, love, I love that Kyra d i l l I really love Moro Breeze. <laughs> <Yeah> . <laughs>、uh. <laughs> go play my mods, donate to my Patreon. <laughs> I want to go to the esophagus of the world. <laughs> <Yeah> . I usually <laughs> play as a, a crocodile. <laughs> Or a lion. Or a lion race. <laughs> when I play. I the, like to play those Viking When I play、people. the older scrolls <laughs> of Tamriel. <laughs> the older paper book. Yeah. But、um, the point is, you kind of want both when making your. I mean, when, at, as an eventual goal. <laughs> to me, No Man's、yeah. Sky would have just been better off if they said. Okay, let's procedurally generate the land, and then users can make it fun by making quests and making handcrafted、yeah. gameplay with mods and stuff like that. I think that would have been the perfect way to go about it. Yeah. But I don't know if that's even feasible because the creation kit is so easy to use, and that's why mods are so popular, and that's why they don't ever change to a new engine. No Man's Sky feels like something. Incredibly, like, technically difficult, and there's no way that the average Joe like myself or like、uh, any like mod author without like programming skills could mod. So, I don't know if that's impossible on a technical level, but I do think that's kind of the direction that they maybe should have gone. Yeah,、uh, like maybe generate less planets, yeah, because make it a bit simpler. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there is、make、a way to a have both,、simpler. there is a way to have both. Size and substance,、um, and that's by using the millions of humans out there as、yeah. your labor. You know, you can have both, so and that's kind of what modding has done for Skyrim. You have tons of content and tons of worlds and all this stuff because you have this like labor force where you can create grand epics and and like lots of quests、um, for free, more <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so. As long as you've got the patience. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's kind of like there is a way to have both. There is a way to have handcrafted stuff and have a huge world and a huge con- amount、yeah. of content. And that's kind of using the people. And, By crowdsourcing. Yeah, crowdsourcing. That's the word. You explained it in one word that I was trying, mumbling on for like 10 minutes. God. <laughs> Imagine how short this podcast would be if I let you talk more. Crowdsourcing. I'm just, I'm just an asshole. I should stop.、Talking. Donate. I hate talking too. I don't know why I'm talking so much. Say、it's、something else. This is the only time you get to talk yes, to someone. Yes, it is. It is. Say something <laughs> don't else. Don't worry. It's the same for me. <laughs> like, that's why I find it so weird voicing Mara because she speaks more than I do. I think I've spoken more as Mara for like, the past couple of months than I have as myself. So I'm trying to rectify that with the podcast. You, you're not letting me do, do it because you keep on speaking over me. <laughs> Do you slip accents when you're talking to people? Well, my、um, parents have been taking the mick out of me recently、mm. because <laughs> my accent does go a bit in and out at the minute. 
Like, I've started doing the um, upward inflection towards the end of sentences, which is quite characteristic of Mara's speech. Mm. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I go up in pitch slightly <laughs> every time I finish a sentence. Mm. That's and mum thinks it sounds like I'm saying a question <laughs> at the at the end of every sentence. <laughs> I've got to stop. I can't stop doing it now. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, what have you done to me? Now that's a new Patreon goal. Donate to fix it. <laughs> yeah. Help me donate. fix my accent. So- <laughs> donate. Well, that's going to be my stretch goal. Like, <laughs> if someone donates me, like, a grand, then I'll come over to America so I can perfect ah. my regional accents. Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, my goals aren't very serious, to mm, be honest. Yeah, unlike mine, which is to fund a crippled Kastani warhead for a million dollars. <laughs> One million dollars. Yeah. One million dollars. God, I haven't seen Austin Powers in forever. Yeah, me neither. I had to actually oh, look boy. it up because I didn't know what the warhead was. I had to, like, Google it. Oh, wow. Um, Is there anything else you want to talk about? Um. Uh, there was something on that. Um, Stranger Things. Ah, yes, Stranger Things. We've talked about my... things that we hate, and now let's talk about something we like. Something we love. Yes. So that because if we're positive towards the end of the of the podcast, it's like a shit sandwich. The so people will go away <laughs> with like a nice feeling, so they'll be more willing to donate ah, to our Patreons. Yes, yes. Psychology. Yes. That's how I'm clever. <laughs> that was a great subliminal message you did. Just say donate, yeah. <laughs> donate, donate. We should just put hypnotoad at the end of this yeah. podcast. If with only donate, it really worked. Donate, <laughs> donate. Um, Maybe that's what we should just call this podcast. Donate. Mm. <laughs> if we could only there put links in the titles and then pop up ads. Yeah. yeah. Pop up ads in the game. Come on. Donate. Have Mara say anyway, every stranger. five seconds. <laughs> Maybe that can be like her death rattle. <laughs> Donate. <laughs> Money. <laughs> Please. Um. Yeah, Stranger Things. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do you want to hear my Stranger Things theory? Sure. I think... You know that Kojima left Konami mm. and like Silent Hills got cancelled. Right. I think that Kojima went to Netflix and he was like, yo, guys, I've got this wicked story to tell you. It's basically <laughs> the plot line for Silent Hills, but we're not allowed to say this Silent Hills, so I just want you to change a couple of things around. So, small mid, small town in the middle of the USA. There's the first point. Mm. Parallel worlds. Creepy transitions, spooky, scary skeletons, and creepy kids. Mm. Silent Hills. There we go. And a Norman Reedus lookalike. Mm. I feel like, though, if Kojima was involved, there would have been like a five minute sequence where just music was playing while they were riding their bikes. <laughs> and there was a lot of smoking. <laughs> yeah. Like, Hopper was basically Snake. I feel like if Kojima was involved. <laughs> They would have replaced Hopper, the sheriff, with Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> Don't even joke about that. I feel like there would be a lot of things if Kojima was involved. But, um, yeah, yeah. there is a definite Silent Hills feel to it. That's uh, how it was sold to me. Yeah, I mean, the the writers pretty much admitted that much, uh, that they're influenced by that video game. But I think the stronger influence is just 80s culture. It's just, it's all yeah. over the place. Like, the whole bike thing is like an E.T. thing. The whole high schoolers and little kids in a small town is kind of like Goonies. And and the actual plot line was very Stephen King-ish. Yeah, yeah. And so the whole thing was just like straight from the 80s, right down to the font used in, in the title screen. Yeah. It's just music. And the soundtrack, the synth. Yeah. Oh my god, that soundtrack is gorgeous. Mm. I am so happy that they released it separately because it is incredible. And that's not to say that it's unoriginal. I I think what it's doing is it's taking a formula that's kind of tried and tested and just making it into something that reflects their own influences and things that they, uh, their personal And tweaking it to suit a modern era while still 
being right in set in the eighties, the storyline still works for a modern era because there are twists like the asshole cop isn't a complete asshole. The jerk jerk off jock guy who sleeps with the girl isn't actually that big of a jerk. He just doesn't understand yeah. things like that. Hot girl doesn't get with weirdo at the end. Like it subverts a lot of traditional eighties movie tropes. Yeah, and so that's an example I think of taking something like. I mean, they didn't take anything from the eighties directly, like the Killing Joke did, but they did, you know, borrow a lot of influences. But they kind of yeah adapted it well, and they took stuff that would kind of translate well to a modern audience. Where I think. The Killing Joke is kind of like the opposite, where it's just, it's, the source material wasn't all that great to begin with for a modern audience, and then then trying to force it into, like, 2016 didn't really work all that well, whereas yeah. with Stranger Things, it was, like, a seamless transition, and there's really nothing that you could say that's really bad about it. That's why it's, like, beloved by all, because it's just almost like a perfect transition from 80s yeah, to... Yeah, it's just, like, I think that Winona Ryder deserves an Emmy for that performance. It was so heartbreaking. <laughs> and she was just so intense. This is the first time she's done TV, I think. And she was just so intense and such such an amazing, talented actress. The kids were great. You don't get very good kid actors very often. Yeah. And I love them all. The little girl who played Elle, Mike, Dustin, it was great. They were amazing. Yeah, I, the bullies weren't great, <laughs> but everyone else was. I do think it's weird how in the TV world, or in any kind of supernatural show that deals with like a cult or whatever, just stuff that is beyond the realm of reality, that the crazy people, are, the people that we would mock in real life are like the ones that everyone should listen to. <laughs> so like the lady yeah. talking to her Christmas lights, Winona Ryder in this case, is like, you're kind of like, like, why isn't her son listening to her? Like, why isn't the sheriff listening to her? Like, she's... Yeah. If they would only just, like, heed her advice. But then, in real life, if someone said that to you, like, oh... You'd be like, oh, we need to get you into an asylum. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you stay there. We'll take down these fairy lights, okay? Hopefully not Arkham Asylum, though, because then you'd escape and you'd then be talking... Then she'd just break <laughs> yeah. out. Then you'd just be talking to your Christmas lights all over again, and then you'd have to call and Maybe Batman. shooting someone in the stomach. <laughs> yeah. And potentially raping them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of interesting thing I, I always find when it's like it doesn't matter what like movie or whatever. It's the same with like Ghostbusters, like the original Ghostbusters. I haven't seen the new one yet, but the original Ghostbusters, oh, where um, the EPA guy, he's like screaming and yelling at the Ghostbusters, like shut down this like what they're, this fucking crazy thing that they're doing which is trapping ghosts you fucking nut job yeah you're trapping ghosts in a red box yeah sure buddy this is a legitimate <laughs> health and safety concern yeah. but we're all meant to root against him. Yeah. and in real life he would be the sane one like yeah yeah he'd be the one who'd be like heralded as the savior yeah of the city yeah, and things well, like that stopping these con artists who are basically robbing poor old ladies and from you know ghosts that you don't think exist. They're haunted, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's weird how like when you have the knowledge that this stuff is real, all of a sudden the crazy people you're on their side. Yeah. And it's just yeah, it's all perspective more or less. So yeah, like I think if we hadn't been shown any of the like I think if they cut it so that there were no R Winona Ryder's crazy crazy scenes. In there, if we only saw her through the eyes of other characters, we didn't see her by herself, then we would be kind of like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. She's not right. Yeah. Um, She's not doing too well. Imagine if they had a movie like that where you saw it from the perspective of the crazy person, but at the end, it turns out they were actually crazy all along and we were just along for the ride. <laughs> I would love something like that. That would be a crazy twist. That would be a great film. That would be like... And like Shyamalan when he was an actually good director kind of twist. Yeah. Hopefully he's like listening to this podcast so he can take our idea and Well maybe we should get a more acclaimed director to steal that idea. <laughs> That's true. We're above We don't want an avatar. <laughs> yeah. We don't want an last airbender. Sorry, M Knight. Debacle on our shoulders. Yeah. Sorry, M Knight. We're gonna hold out for someone with a little more chops, directing chops. You know yeah. how it is. 
Yeah, I mean, you might make decent box office yeah. numbers, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently um, M. Night Shyamalan was the one who discovered the Duffer Brothers. <laughs> so we shouldn't be oh, ragging yeah, on him yeah, too much. Should, yeah. Like, the show's creators. Yeah. Okay, like, we might consider you, but it would require a hefty Patreon. The Duffer Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> no, it would require a hefty Patreon donation. Yeah. We're not easily swayed, but we are easily bribed. Yeah. Yes. Like, just give us a fiver. Yeah. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> then you can, like, have the idea. I'm cool with it. Yeah, next week you see, like, $5 donation from M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> I would be so happy with that. He can steal my ideas. Yeah. That's yeah. all I want. That's all the royalties I want, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, Stranger Things on a scale of Game of Thrones characters. What would you give it? Um, I'd give it a... You're on Greyjoy. And why is that? Because eldritch abominations. Mm. HP Lovecraft all up <laughs> in this shit. Get the Krakens out here, yo. I would give it... Um, what's the name of the Red God or whatever? Is it just Red God? R'hllor. R'hllor, that's it, yeah. R'hllor. I would give it a R'hllor because it is... Rahalu. Yes. Red R'hllor. It is something that is real... That's sort of, we've given proof that it's real, but a lot of people don't necessarily believe in. And so that kind of theme runs, runs through, through the, TV yeah, show. the TV show. But it could also be about the old gods because it kind of has this whole like White Walker kind of old gods, like unstoppable yeah. force kind of thing. So yeah, maybe that's better than R'hllor. Fuck you, R'hllor. I'm, Red R'hllor. Yeah, I'm dumping you for the old tree gods <laughs> in the north. Yeah. Donate. <laughs> Crowdsource. <laughs> Money, <laughs> please. Money now. <laughs> um. On that note, <laughs> with that final reminder to our generous listeners, yes, I think we shall say good night. Yes, tune in next time for another thrilling podcast. Hopefully, sponsored by someone with a lot of money. Yes, preferably sponsored by M Night Shyamalan. <laughs> for five whole dollars yes anything else you want to add donate <laughs> okay donate all right um that's it for this episode of lord friendly uh say goodbye else donate <laughs> yes and do that too all right bye donate <laughs>